Welcome to Northern Powerhouses Business Success Stories, um, where we discuss with local uh, business leaders, their backgrounds, their successes and challenges, and what drives them forward. And today I'm delighted to have with us Hannah Natalie Hosseny of Ma the Manager Director at Consume Comms. So, uh, so Hannah and Natalie, thanks so much for coming on board and, and, and spending some time with us. And if you'd first like to introduce yourself to uh, the audience in terms of who you are, what your company does and how you help your clients, that would be great. Uh, thanks for having me. So I am um, the MD of Consume Comms. We literally have just turned six years old um, this past week, um, which is quite interesting, you know, kind of going into year three of a global pandemic. I'm, I'm proud that we've managed to keep going and um, we operate across Leeds. I was based in Leeds for the last decade and um, recently moved across to Manchester. So we've got a presence in Manchester and also way up north in Northumberland. Um, as a business, we pride ourselves in um, creating co comms that foster communities. So um, my background is I ran a creative community, GLUG, um, which is part of what's well, part of the global creative community with um, chapters in 35 countries. I ran the Yorkshire division for six years. Um, so most people kind of know my face from running and hosting that creative event around Leeds. Um, we also get involved in things like empowering women with tech, um, the International Festival um, and BEMA. So I'm a chair, Yorkshire chairperson for BEMA um, and everything we kind of work around is around storytelling for brands and just ensuring that they're kind of being their most authentic selves with using their own voices, really. So we kind of help businesses that are struggling to, you know, on the blank page of how am I going to write this social media? Um, we take it back a step and just say, you know, social should be social. It's a conversation about yourself um, and kind of encourage them to create communities over um, kind of customer bases. You know, think of those people, what, what value you're offering. So we're, we're very much kind of holistic marketing um, through from website technical, uh, social media and events when we had them that are slowly coming back now. Um, so that's us in a nutshell. Um Alongside that, I also run a couple of communities, like I mentioned, and I have a little side hustle of a food business, um, Little Yellow Rice Co., which is all around my um, Chinese Malaysian Peranakan heritage. Wow. Wowzers. So <laughs> you must be a very busy lady, I would imagine. Yes. So what's going on? That sounds fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Southeast Asia, so it'd be good to uh, talk more well, about that. Not for hours, then. hundred <laughs> percent. Well, it's um, it, yeah, somewhere I spent a bit of time with many years ago, and I'm, I'm dying to get back back there fairly soon. Same. And hopefully, when all is, is over. Um, so, how did you? I mean, just a little bit of start. How how did you get into the in, into this particular business, and why why, why this one? Or well, uh, you know, and what drives you forward with it? Yeah, um, so I I did a degree in design and yep. then realised I wasn't very good at design and uh, sideways it's kind of uh, into marketing um, and I, I was kind of in marketing, in-house marketing. I didn't work agency side actually, I was an in-house marketer for about 10 years. Um, well, predominantly in Yorkshire actually, my whole career was in Yorkshire. Yep. Um, I started at... Simply Biz, which was at the Gal Farm. I think it's John Smith's now. Um, that was my first move north. Uh, and yep. then I went into the lift industry, which I absolutely loved. It was a great opportunity because they really just let me do what I want with the budget. And kind of being a 26-year-old marketer, it was just, it was fantastic. because they let me do events, let me host exhibitions at Excel. Um, I had a great five years there in Bradford. Um, and then I went into a telecoms business um and then into med tech and then i kind of reached a point where i was running quite a few community events across leeds and um having a full-time job was uh, kind of it didn't I, I was kind of juggle the two and um now i'm an employer i kind of realize it's a bit annoying when your member staff keeps disappearing to say can i have half a day because i need to go and like set up this event so um i kind of i got i got made redundant which i think a lot of people are in that situation i got made redundant thought right it's make or break I'm going to just go for it and see if I can build my own agency based on my kind of like passion for like community stuff and see where that goes. I've got enough contacts from community work. Let's see if I can actually use that narrative to create my own business. Um, yeah. And yeah, it kind of grew from there. And we, I, I kind of specialize in tech marketing. Um, most of our clients have either work on a tech platform or were tech recruiters, digital consultants. Yeah. 
Um, so I've kind of fallen into that side of working around tech, but I really enjoy it because a lot of people shy away from tech marketing because you have to understand the language. And um, But I think our team kind of like it. We kind of like the challenge of like, if we don't understand something, it's all part of the marketing, isn't it? Kind of asking yeah. the right questions and unpacking it. So it's kind of like a pure marketing thing to do is sort of shine away from it. So um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's many tech marketing agencies. I think they're coming up now. We don't we don't do kind of sexy advertising branding. We do very gritty um, tech marketing around digital transformation agencies and explaining to uh, different sectors how that that works for them. Um, and I said we've we've Brilliant. survived six years and here we are, still going. Well done, really well done. And um, yeah, I was made redundant for my first job, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. I have to say. Yeah. Um, it was absolutely blessing, um, and, and I look back with it with 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 a lot of pleasure because it was um, it was. If I hadn't, I think um, my whole career would have been totally different. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm really pleased. So uh, fast, fascinating the the, 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 um, the tech side of things. But looking back over the six years, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome? I think definitely, I would say the biggest challenge is being is the business side. Because when you set up any kind of consultancy, your expertise is in, you know, your skill set, like for me, it's marketing. But I yep. wasn't equipped to run a business, uh, tax, <laughs> HR, uh, <laughs> leadership, um, you know, running running a team um, is very different when you're the, there's no one above you to defer to. Um, I think those are the biggest challenges. And um the business side of that you know because you're you're not you're never if you're you're specializing in a particular area or skills and expertise are rarely business management side um so i think that's that's the biggest challenge is the actual day-to-day running the business and that's something you kind of learn on the job and make a lot of mistakes um and i think you know the first three years you make all the mistakes you make them every day but you get a little bit better at managing them brilliant Absolutely. Yeah, we often find, I mean, I often find what I do that, that, you know, most businesses are started by people that are good at what they do. They're not necessarily good at running a business at what they do. And it's understanding there's there's quite a big gap between those two things. Yeah. Um, and so there's a, obviously a lot of learning needs to happen. And what would you say are some of the biggest learnings that you've had um, over these last six years in business? I mean, I, th- I think it's probably one a lot of people say, but delegating, um, especially yeah. when you set up as a consultant, um and then and then things grow you're so used to managing everything and i think that's one of the biggest thing is learning to delegate and yeah. definitely for me now I, I am of that opinion i know it, it will never be the same as if i handle that particular task or project because it's my business it's my baby but yeah. i think i'm i'm proud of my team that they're, they're good enough that they appreciate it's a small team so they kind of understand that we're all in it together if you know the business does well they do well but yeah, delegating is really hard to like hand over stuff especially because it's like what we do the one nature of how we work is like people-based communities stories and you kind of get really um get really kind of embedded into someone else's business when you're telling their story so it's hard to want to pass that over um i think it's also learning to, to kind of not have perfection yep. um perf- you know it's efficiency over perfection is is okay. a hard one i love I'm going to ask for quotes later, but I love that one. Efficiency over perfection. It yeah. is. It is. Say it's understanding that it doesn't have to be as good as somebody doesn't have to do something as good as me, but good enough. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's one of the big challenges, isn't it? It's. I, I always say to people, you know, you know, they don't have to do it as well as you because, okay, if, if we're the expert, that's fine. But if we train them up to do it well enough that for the client's satisfaction and delight, then that's great. Um, yeah, working progress. Yeah. Everything's working progress. <laughs> yes absolutely i think that'll be uh, that'll be me till uh, to a, for a very long time yeah, exactly so, yeah. who, who or what might have been sort of some of the biggest influences in your career if any um i think it's, it's definitely the people around me so um especially in my career in in yorkshire i've i've been really really lucky to work with um some really great women um which is which is it's an unusual position because all the industries I've worked in have been very male orientated. You know, I went from um, financial services to engineering into telecoms and then tech. But actually, in that, I was really lucky to have um, some really really great women work around me. So, um, you know, Natasha Salem, that say Salem, 
who runs Empowering Women. She's like a great cheerleader. She will always, even though she's like very high profile with a job at Amazon, she'll always shout and cheerlead me. And I'm, you know, it's people like that that just remind you that it doesn't matter where you go, you have to kind of make sure that you're also offering the same opportunities and support for everyone behind you. So I think having people like her and, you know, Amy, it's Bozzy, we've worked on so many projects together. She always remembers me. And I think it's having those people as an example when I was coming into consultancy and working on my own um, to be around people like that to, to kind of see how they're doing it um, and being like be personal. You don't have to be, um, yep. you know, too too much ego. You know, you can still be very personal and, and, and be successful and professional. And I learned that from having those kind of women around me. Yes, I, I, I've, you know, I, I've seen over time that that many of the most successful people I've ever met have been incredibly humble and, yes. and really willing to help anybody else and it, it, it's a really strange thing that really they're willing to help and yet often we don't approach them because we think they're too busy or they wouldn't want to or those sorts of things and um, yeah. I've, 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 I was lucky enough many years ago to, re to meet a guy called Terry Matthews who was the first Welsh billionaire um and and he you know and he, he just he, and he was so humble and i just told him about my sort of small little business that I grown and he said that it's absolutely brilliant he said i only tell people about what i do just because i want to help them um develop and grow but there's no you know that there was no um i don't know hierarchical issue he just really wanted to help and it was a really great guy and uh, i've seen that time and time again with with successful people so uh, yeah. i totally um get get what you're saying so have you picked up as i said it's like, you know, I, I love i'm going to remember that one efficiency over perfection but any other favorite quotes or sayings that, that you live or work by um i don't know well i think we i don't i don't really have any kind of so i have my own little saying so um we are we're mainly a female female business um so we have little funny things like we have big hoop attitude um you know but when you put your big hoops in you have to approach it with that kind of big hoop attitude and energy mm -hmm. um so we have things like that that aren't so applicable for our members of staff but um <laughs> it's very it's very much a consume kind of consume come saying um and i'm me being from kent i am very much a, the kind of person who wears big gold hoops and um has a really? accent and enjoys that <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm going to remember that one. I think uh, I'm sure we can make that applicable. Big hoop attitude. I'll, I'll yeah. go for that. Um, and what, what, obviously, we're talking about the last six years, and it's been obviously a bit of a roller coaster for, for many people. And yeah. What What would you say you've learned about yourself over that period? I think um, it's definitely. Yeah, I know. I always thought we were quite resilient, but I think being the, the level of resilience that we had to have over the last two two years or two, coming into three um and the ability like just to to really I, I i wasn't never sure about my leadership skills and over the last couple of years i really had to to dig deep on that because you were supporting the team in a way that you never had to before yeah. you know we had to look at things like supporting their mental health um yes. flexibility for work and and everything i think a lot the, a lot of the job became more managing um how how the work facilitated their mental health and you know some of them needed more to have more time off whereas others wanted to be busy all the time um and I, I had to kind of like really look at people skills you know I'm used to kind of hosting events and um being able to chat to people but like actually looking at things like you know where they feel you've got staff that are a bit more vulnerable um yeah. was a skill I didn't think I, I I had to I would have had to do before um yeah. so yeah, I think that was I probably when I went on courses, I did all the online courses and stuff because I was really, I was a bit lost. I was like, I don't know how to help them. And you know, you can see people are struggling. And it's yes. again, it's not something you think you'd have to deal with when you're running an agency and working in marketing. But I think a lot of small businesses were in that position where you had to start looking at, you know, the wider spectrum of I guess it's HR, you know, that you didn't have to do before. Um yes. but yeah, definitely trying to find ways to have those conversations with the team without prying and find the right balance of being able to work out are they okay and how can you help was was a challenge yeah i can i can, I can totally align with that i think uh, you know I, I feel that every um you know just about everybody's mental robustness has probably dropped over time so then it, it, you know the sort of above going into real health issues but just the ability to deal with challenges um has, has reduced i think in, in myself 
uh, as well as other people around, uh, that, that I've seen around. And, and it's being, as a leader, as you rightly say, being understanding of that and working towards helping people. And um, I, th yeah. I think we've still got plenty, plenty of things to work on. You know, it's, although we might be out of lockdown, I don't think we're out of the implications and the, the ramifications of this for very, for very long time. No, I mean, absolutely not. But I think what we've we've gone into this year in a completely different attitude. We're so much more positive and settled because we just feel like we've seen how bad it can get. And yes. we put things in place to get through that. So now we, we kind of know, like, well, if it gets bad, we know what we're going to do. We know what we can do, um, which is a good because the last like going into the last new year, I think we were really struggling because we just thought, well, we thought it would only be two weeks. We thought it would be six weeks, so it's six months. And it just kept going but I think this year we're just we like it's very much like a different attitude it's the most positive attitude I've kind of seen us going to a new year for for a, a while now yeah I, I, it's great I, I think the whole you know thing around resilience is really key and, and, and learning that from 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 you know getting through I've, I've, I've been through a couple of sessions over time and and you know getting through something get is is, is a massive win it, it you know even if we just survive at a base level it's still a massive win because unfortunately a lot of people don't and haven't so um getting through that in fact my um one of my favorite quotes is is i think it's a japanese problem which is fall down seven times but get up eight and i think that's as you know for, for that's that's held me a good stead for a long time it's it's not how how often i fall down but it's how often i get up that's that, that's most important yeah so I'm just really keen to say I, I, what you feel about the future, what the future looks like for you uh, and Consume Commons and, and what challenges you may face as, as you move forward. I think, well, one of the biggest things that I've personally kind of looked at over the last couple of years um, was kind of looking at representation. So we've always been involved in terms of um, representation for women in tech and just general role models to ensure, you know, um, that there are those figures that we can look up to across the board. Um, especially being a female agency owner and a person of colour, you know, there's not there's not a lot of them. There's not so that's always been a key for me. And I was really fortunate over to use my time over the pandemic to engage with loads of groups. So um I've got some really good friends at BC, and so the British East and Southeast Asian Network, right. Asian Leadership Collective. So for us, we made the decision that this year we are going to kind of change direction with the business a little bit. So we're going to focus on supporting brands that are looking to um, communicate about authenticity and find their voice in those um, lesser represented areas. So yep. we're, we're going to be looking at EC businesses to look to support them more um, based on the journey I've been on for the last two years, really. So I think there'll be a lot of challenges involved with that, you know, especially our team is very mixed. Um, so it's for them navigating some of those things that they don't feel they might have the synergy with and me making sure they're equipped to confidently deal with those the new kind of clients that are going to come through um so i think that's going to be the challenge for the next year we're just going to reshape the business a little, little bit um still have our tech focus but we're also looking to bring in a new arm that's focused on branding and communications for the uh, the ec market wow sounds like very exciting it's a very exciting future um, and, well, it, it, it's been great talking to you, Hannah. I've, I've got a couple of last questions for you. I'm really interested to see your 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 um, your thoughts on these. And the first one is, what would you say to anyone that was thinking of going into business right now? Um, I would. I think it's around authenticity. It's one of my favourite words. Is you know you have to trust you. If you're going into business, the bris the business brand is going to be you. And I think a lot of people really struggle with that. They really struggle with like they always think when you go into business, you have to represent a certain way. You have to be very professional or, you know, you have to be like this person that looks like a business person. But the biggest value of your business is is who you are and the things that, that kind of set you apart, your values and what you're passionate about. That will take you through the hard times. Definitely. Brilliant. I 100 percent support that. I think it, it, it's a lesson to learn, isn't it? But you know, we 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 are unique, and that what makes that's what makes us different. And being ourselves makes things far more easy than trying to be somebody else. I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know why yeah. uh, why people would. I don't know why I did over time. I know I probably have done. We all did it. We all did <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's uh, and then you realise, mm, uh, yes, it's uh, no. I think uh, uh, yeah, but being me is okay, and it's and it's good. Um, and, and lastly, I'm, I'm really keen to know your thoughts of what 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 advice would you give to an 18 year old you if you could go back in time and and, and do give that advice? 
I think I, I have always taken every opportunity that came my way. My mum's my mum says I'm a nightmare for it. She says you're always up to something, um, <laughs> and she has said that to me since I was 18. But I, I think mean, the only difference would be in taking all those opportunities is not to wait so long, because I think there have been periods maybe earlier in my career when I stayed in that job and like say a lot of us, we 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 wouldn't have taken the leap into self employment without redundancy, and I think if I'd have had a little bit more confidence to take that leap, but the biggest difference for me was to find the network earlier, find that network of people because I was a little bit shy to find that professional business network and go out yeah. and find people and ask questions, even though I'm quite confident. But I think that was a big, big turner for me is when I started finding groups and finding other people that were in the same boat or had a business. So I think my advice to that 18 year old person would be, you know, you've got your social groups, but also go and find mentors, go and find you know, people that are doing the job that you think you want to do and then you'll know if that's the job you want to do and, you know, like you fail fast, don't you? And then you move on to the next thing. Brilliant. Wonderful. Great advice. Wise words. Um, well, Hannah, actually, that, that, that's been really wonderful. Thank you so much for, for your thoughts and views and we really, we, we, you know, wish you well for the future and uh, it'd be Thank great you. to maybe catch up in another 6-12 <laughs> and, and, and see what's, what's A, what's what you've achieved, but also what's next, because I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure from speaking to you, there'll be something new on the horizon <laughs> at that point as well. <laughs> Hopefully not another business. I'm all right so, with it at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much 